So I have spent the past, I don't know, maybe nine, 10 weeks trying to find one of these. They are next to impossible. I feel like they are sold out or on back order everywhere in the entire world. But after about a two month search, I was able to get my hands on one on, on loan from Fujifilm. Uh, unfortunately, I don't own it. I will have to give it back here in about a month, but I'm very grateful to have even had the opportunity to get my hands on one of these because I really wanted to see what all the hype was about. I've been hearing so much about the, um, the Fujifilm X100V, which is like a point and shoot uh, range, range finder style of camera. Am I recording? Okay, good. <laughs> and I just wanted to, you know, see what all the fuss was about. So check it out. I haven't used a camera like this in quite some time. So I come out to this area here to do a little bit of a point and shoot landscape photography. Now I've always been into kind of retro tech from Game Boys to Walkmans to I still own a VCR and record players and, and Discmans and, and all that kind of stuff. But I, I always had a thing for, for uh, old school technology. And this right here really kind of, I don't know, it, it intrigued me a while ago when I started to, to uh, you know, read articles and starting to hear people talk about it. But what's so interesting about this camera is that it's, it's I'm holding it up, I don't know if you can see it, is that it's, it's not a new camera. It came out in... I think the beginning of 2020, so it's a little over two years old, but if, I feel like the buzz on this com camera seems to have been building and building and building over those last two years to the point now, everywhere I turn, I hear people talking about the X100V. And I just, I love the, the overall look of it. The aesthetics I think is absolutely fantastic. And it does have that kind of old school retro tech look to it. So I was really, really drawn to it and wanted to, to get my hands on it and uh, just trying to, you know, push my, my limits a little bit to try and do something that's completely outside of my wheelhouse. Now, I'm not one of those people that thinks that a camera has to be beautiful and has to look amazing, but I do think that if it can be, it's a, it's a nice touch. You know, definitely performance and image quality is the most important aspect of a camera to me. But if it can look good also, I think that's an absolute win. So um, this, you know, and I, I don't mean to sound... I don't know, maybe shallow. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, but I really do love the way that the the camera the camera works, and I usually like to have, you know, have an opportunity to play with lenses or, or bags or cameras for at least a month or so before I mention them on the channel here. But I figured it might be fun to, to kind of get out here in sort of like a, a first impressions type of a video. But one thing I have noticed in the very short amount of time that I have uh, used this camera is that I look at things completely different. And that might seem obvious because it's a, a fixed focal length camera. It's a, a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent, which I think is 23 millimeters ish. If, if I'm wrong, I'll flash it on the screen somewhere. But definitely looking at things slightly different. Like I would never really pay attention to this little green plant right here, but I like the color contrast against the log that it is uh, in front of. And I think that, um, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's interesting. I wish I had a polarizer. Actually, I wish I had some, some filters for this. I know they make some, but I don't have any right now. But this is kind of, kind of interesting right here. Very simplistic, but there's a little bit of light just touching the top of these ferns. I don't know if they're ferns, <laughs> this green plant. And it looks, it looks interesting. Now, one issue I'm encountering is, uh, one, I don't have a tripod with me to, to shoot with, but uh, so I'm hand-holding everything, and I, I'm, I don't do a whole lot of uh, hand-holding photography. I'm almost always on a tripod, and there's some thunderstorms rolling in here, and it's getting pretty breezy, and I'm having a hard time getting the, uh, the shutter speed fast enough for me to be able to uh, hand-hold the, the image to, uh, to get a crisp shot out of it. So that's been the, the biggest struggle so far. 
but it is, uh, it is definitely something completely different from what <laughs> I'm used to doing. And um, it, it's a challenge, which I, which I think is important as kind of the, the whole objective here. But one thing that I'm absolutely enjoying, other than uh, the, the challenge of all this, is the fact that I'm carrying practically nothing. I just have this little kind of like a hip bag with me with uh, just something to uh, record this video with and the, uh, the uh, X100V. Now I do like this scene right here. It's a little chaotic. This entire woodland's chaotic, and it's not super exciting either, but it's more exciting than my local area. But there, there's some nice kind of light coming through one side. This, this image is kind of split half and half. His uh, bottom left-hand corner is shadows, and it kind of leads into a much brighter area of the scene, and it, it, it works to a, a certain extent, I suppose. I found this area here got this nice kind of S curve in the path here and you got these I believe they're ferns somebody correct me if I'm wrong kind of leading or, or edging this kind of walkway a little bit and these two nice trees on each side of the path kind of framing it up right at the break of the curve on each side so that is pretty cool capture just a few of these I'm starting to hear some thunder out there so I don't know how much time we're gonna have but this flip out screen is pretty nice because you can get really really low and not have to kind of break your back well this area over here is kind of cool there's a little bit of light hitting the uh this kind of fallen tree and it's got a little bit of moss on it whoa oh balance yeah this looks okay i'm shooting a jpeg and raw and i'm using that classic chrome uh, film simulation and um, Classic Chrome and I think the Nostalgic Neg would seem to be my two favorite, but I'm um, really looking, I'm interested to see the, uh, the JPEGs that come out of here. But this is the 26.1 megapixel sensor. It's the X-Trans sensor. I'm not 100% certain if it's the same sensor that's in the X-T4 that I'm filming this video on now or not. But uh, nevertheless, what I've seen so far, the, uh, the images look really nice, but people rave about this lens. And I, I, like I said, I've, I've only shot with it around my local area a little bit, but the images I put on my computer and review, they, they do look really, really nice considering how compact of a size this camera really is. You hear that? Thunder. And it's getting more and more frequent and it's starting to get much, much darker in here, which is only adding to my, uh, my shutter speed troubles, tr struggles that I am having. But I'll tell you what though, this type of photography, it is uh, obviously it's a lot different than the types of cameras that most people use for landscape photography, but it is a very freeing experience to tell you all. Well, one, not having a tripod, there it is again, not having a tripod with you is a beautiful thing. And uh, I shouldn't say that. I mean, a, a tripod is definitely um, an important tool, I think not only for keeping your camera stable, but also for slowing you down and helping you to make more pur purposeful and more refined adjustments to a composition. But it's also something else to carry and it's probably the largest piece of kit that we all have. But nevertheless, it, it is nice to, to not have one with me, but um, just kind of pointing and shooting and just uh, running and gunning a little bit and just capturing compositions that I never would really uh, pay much attention to. And I don't think any, I've even captured anything that's super exciting, but I'm mostly just wanting to, to test the camera out, uh, test the functionality of it out, and just see if it's something that uh, I might be interested in. I was really never in the market for a point and shoot camera until I started to kind of pay more attention to this. And over the last week or so that I've been using it, I could definitely see a good use case for having it as just something that you can just kind of grab real quick and take with you pretty much everywhere. I don't think I am uh, welcome in the woods anymore. <laughs> There's a, now that thunder is uh, coming with lightning as well. So I need to start kind of making my way back out of here. I don't want to get caught all the way deep in, the, in this area. In a torrential downpour, I don't really have a rain cover for my, for my little bag. And... Uh, yeah, it would just be easier if I was closer. But as I was walking past this kind of S-curve that I shot earlier, I think it actually looks better going out. So I'm gonna capture this and just kind of photograph my way outside of this park as well, as I leave this park, I should say. As I was heading out, I found this nice kind of lone mushroom all by itself. And I'm trying to kind of get in between these green areas. Let's throw the, the green out of focus, put it in the extreme foreground, and kind of get that in focus in the background. 
looks pretty cool. Trying to get in between this area right here, put this in the extreme foreground and it'll be completely out of focus. And then the mushroom in the background will be in focus and that'll add some pretty interesting depth. Oh, here comes the rain, but I made it back. Oh, just in time. Whew. Well, made it out of there. That was, uh, <laughs> I'm not much of a, what do you call it, a trail runner. So that uh, that was a little taxing on myself. I had, to, I had to take a few minutes to kind of regain my composure a little bit, but uh, I'm hoping that this rain will pass. I did just get an alert on my phone that there's a severe thunderstorm warning in this area. So the odds that it, pa it will pass is slim to none, but uh, I'll pick this up again tomorrow as well. But I did just wanted to, to go over one thing. The thing that I was kind of most concerned about with this camera is how easy or difficult. You see that dial right there? That's a hybrid dial. So it is a the ISO and the shutter speed. So when you want to increase the, the ISO, you actually lift it up and then turn it. And then when you want to adjust the shutter speed, you push the knob down and you adjust the shutter speed. It. When I first thought about that, I was like, that could be a little bit cumbersome. And it was, honestly, when I first started using it. And I'll show you it again right there. If you can't see that, I'll overlay some B-roll, but uh, there it is. But it was, um, it was, it took a little bit of getting used to, but after, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 exposures over the last week, I got the, the hang of it. And it is pretty, pretty cool. I don't know if that is a, a carryover from old school range finders back in the day or not, but it does kind of have a, a retro look to it. It's a retro feel. It's, it's something completely different than the, the way that my X-T4 and GFX uh, operate. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. It was a, a, a welcome change. In this little flippy screen, I do wish that it was, uh, fully articulating so it didn't just go this way i wish it would have gone you know so you could be in a vertical orientation and it would flip kind of out this way like my gfx does but nevertheless it's uh you can't have everything but uh, at least it has that because i use that quite a bit for getting very very low in capturing uh, like that mushroom and it was another scene that uh, i captured where i had to get really low to the ground and that little flippy screen definitely helped so my initial test with the uh x100 v right there, it was a success. And I will, um, I wanna get out and shoot a little bit more. If this rain stops, I'm gonna get out here into this location and based off of that lightning strike right there, it doesn't seem like it's going to anytime soon, but if it doesn't, nevertheless, I will pick this up uh, somewhere else uh, tomorrow. So not only did the rain not let up at all, it actually increased in intensity for the remainder of that day. And it kind of continued on for the next couple of days as well. So I wasn't able to get out, but yesterday I was able to uh, get the camera out at a local uh, park of mine. It's got a nice lake and some, uh, uh, quite a few wildflowers as well. So, so that was a lot of fun just to kind of continue testing this camera out. And I just want to kind of wrap up the video and uh, kind of just share my, my uh, initial thoughts after using it for a, a little, you know, the better portion of a, a week. But um, the Fujifilm, you know, X100V, it is, in my opinion, uh, I guess I should say I can really see what the attraction is about this camera. And I've heard people talk about this as a big censored point and shoot camera. And, um, you know, I'm not a point and shoot expert. I haven't looked at point and shoot cameras in, in quite some time. But I have to believe that having an APS-C sensor in a camera of this size probably does constitute or does put it in the ballpark of a big, uh, a big censored uh, point and shoot camera. But uh, I really have enjoyed it. There was a couple of things that, you know, the way you uh, rotate the, the aperture ring, I found to be a little, uh, somewhat difficult. I think a little cumbersome perhaps, you know, I, I have bigger hands and it's something that I'm not used to. So maybe after I use it for a little while longer, I'll, I'll become uh, more acquainted with that. But I did find that to be a, a little bit, um, I guess fiddly, if you will. It wasn't really that big a deal, but it was something that I did notice from time to time. And I mentioned this a few minutes ago about not having an articulating screen that would flip out vertical. That's something that I really did miss with this camera. But outside of that, I really, really did enjoy it. And I can definitely see a, um a use case or a purpose for having something like this in, in conjunction with your, you know, your larger cameras for, for outdoor and landscape photography. So um, just, just being able to just kind of pull it out real simple, uh, real quickly, I should say. It's not something you can really put in your pocket. I guess you could put it in like an oversized coat pocket. That would be easy, but you're not going to really stuff this in a pair of jeans or khakis or anything like that. That would be a little awkward. 
but uh, it is small enough to where you can just pull it out very quickly and snap off a couple of uh, photographs. And it's something that I, I really did enjoy about using this system. And I come from the, uh, the Fujifilm ecosystem. So this camera operates very, very similar as to my X-T4 and my GFX100S as well. So the learning curve associated with this was really next to nothing. But I really, really did enjoy my time with it. And the lens really is fantastic. It's an F2 lens. I don't think I mentioned that throughout the video. But um, this is the, the probably the aspect, I mean, the fact that the, the retro styling of this camera and this lens, those are, seem to be the, the two, I guess, big selling features that I hear a lot of people talk about. And the lens really is, uh, is fantastic. It creates absolutely beautiful photographs in such a, a small, small form factor. So I really have enjoyed my time using it. Um, I actually kind of would like to purchase one of these. I don't know if I can find one anywhere though. I might try and in, uh, in talk Fuji film into selling this one to me. I don't know if it'll work or not, but they are very difficult to find. So uh, long story short, it's a very good camera. And uh, like I said, only used it for a little, little more than a week, but I had a blast messing around with it. So uh, if you do have any questions about the camera or anything pertaining to the video or anything like that, please leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And if you did enjoy the video enough, if you could share it with uh, your friends or family or maybe your local camera club, I would definitely appreciate that as well. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.